By the time you're 40 years old, you would have maybe been married for a while. You have children in college. You have a house to pay for. You have a car to pay for. You have a body that doesn't quite look and feel the way it used to. You might have aging parents. You may have been through so many different life changes by the time that you're 40. And you can turn around and, you know, assess everything. Just look at where you are. And you're like, this is not what I thought life was going to be. This is not the way I planned it. And then you say something like, I have to change my life. I can't do this anymore. I have to change my life. But what does that mean? What does that really mean? We could say it out of frustration, but if we don't actually sit with changing our lives and what that means, what impact is that going to have? What's required of us? Then life is actually not going to change. It's one thing to hope for something And it's another thing to work for it and to work at it. So whether it's your health or your relationships or starting over in a career, starting over after an ended relationship, starting over, you may have had children really young and now you're an empty nester. So the children are no longer at home for you to focus that attention on. And it doesn't mean that you just drop them off at college and and you have no relationship with them anymore, but it's not the same. You're coming home to an empty house and that part of your life is not the way that it used to look. Or there's a specific way that you wanted your life to to look by the time you were 40 and it doesn't look like that. And you want to work towards that. How do you do that? And saying, I want to change my life is not enough. It's really not enough. And at this big age of 40 plus, if you're in your forties, if you're in your fifties, even in your sixties, I've worked with women who are way older than me and the things that they go through, the regrets that they have, the things that they've always wanted to do that they never gave themselves permission to do or opportunity to do And now they're living with regrets and they don't know how to change their lives. And I really want to help you with that today. So the first thing that we want to look at when you're going to change your life is what does life mean to you? What does it mean to you to live, to live your best life? What does that mean? Is it having a better job, living in a better neighborhood, improving your relationships, improving your health, having the home that you've always dreamed of, is that living your best life? Is living your best life in terms of experiences? Do you want to travel? Do you want to do those adventurous things that maybe you didn't have the courage to do or the resources to do when you were younger? What does living your best life mean? When I teach the vision sequence, one of the first things that we look at when we start planning what your life vision is going to look like is visualization. And this is where you're going to use your imagination and you're going to think about if I was living my best life, what would it look like? And get detailed. How, when I wake up, how do I want to get up? What time do I want to get up? What do I want to eat for breakfast? All these things like close your eyes and imagine yourself Imagine yourself in the life that you believe that you want. What does that look like? Because here's the thing. If we have a vague vision, we're going to get vague results. We're going to have vague outcomes. And saying, oh, I'm frustrated and I need to change my life doesn't change your life. But we have romanticized the idea of living our best lives. And there's almost this this feeling of if I want it bad enough and if I can imagine it um, well enough and if I could describe it well enough that I'm going to attract it to me and I'm going to pull it to me. And I don't believe that's true. I believe that our best life is created by our perception of what a good life is. So for one person, what they see as living their best life may not be to you what living their best life is. Do you know someone who is so happy 
so unbelievably happy. But when you look at their life on paper, maybe compared to you or compared to someone else, that they don't really have that much going for them. And yet they are genuinely happy with life. Why is that? Because their perception of life and their enjoyment of life is different. So I want to encourage you not just to dream and not just to plan and not just to write down the goals and the desires and the dreams that you have. Of course, that's part of it. But also look at yourself and look at how you are interacting with your life. Look at how you are interacting with the people in your life. Look at how you're interacting with the problems in your life. Because after 40, a lot of us feel like what has happened to us is set in stone. And it's not. Your body has gone through changes. Those of us who are mothers, your mind has gone through changes. The world has gone through changes. In the last five years alone, the world has gone through immense change and it has affected every single person on the planet. And there are a lot of women who are beating themselves up because they are no longer the woman that they're used, that they used to be, but you can't be her because she lived in a different world. So changing your life, I get it. It can be terrifying especially if you're in the position that I mentioned before when I opened this video, that you might have children, you might have a home, you might have a car or cars, right? You have, you have aging parents, you have all these different things going on, you have work, you have a business, all these different things. Your body is going through changes. And if you can't get a handle on those things, then it's going to be a terrifying thing to try to change your life because sometimes it might feel like it's easier to stick with the thing that you know. Even if it's dysfunctional, even if it's not optimal, it might just feel easier to stick with what you know than to venture out there and do something different, let alone be someone different. And oh my goodness, I cannot tell you how many women struggle with their own transformation, how many women struggle with their own evolution. But if you are going to change your life after 40, you are going to have to embrace that evolution. And as we talk about womanhood, this age from the um, 40s into your 50s, that's an age where your body is going through immense change. And those changes are going to affect your mind. It literally affects not just your mind because your mind is the soul part of you. It literally affects your brain. It literally affects the way you think. When you're going through menopause, this literally affects the way you think. I, I don't really talk about my menopause journey because I honestly don't think it was menopause. I consider it a time of healing. I woke up, I turned 46. I had been dealing with bleeding for 10 years, uncontrolled bleeding, sometimes two, three weeks at a time. I did not have a normal period for a very long time. And October 22nd, 2021, my period stopped and they have not come back. I don't have the menopause symptoms that a lot of other women have. As a matter of fact, I feel better in my body at 49 years old than I felt when I was in my twenties. So I don't have that, that experience, but I know that this is what a lot of women are going through. You're going through the hot flashes. Your sexuality is changing. Your body image is changing. The things that you used to eat that work don't work anymore. So if you're going to change your life after 40, you have to be strategic and strategic doesn't mean that you find some guru who's following some, some, recipe for life and they eat these five things every morning and they wake up at 4 a.m. and they work out at 2 p.m. Like that might work for them, but it might not work for you. So finding a framework that is going to help you build or rebuild the life that you really want is absolutely essential. 
I get the frustration, but you cannot stay there. You cannot stay in a place of frustration. Frustration will tell you where you need to focus. That it will do. And one of the things that I love to do is to sit down with women. We have 12 areas of life that we can look at because you are not just a wife. You are not just a mother. You are not just an employee. You're not just a daughter. You are not just a neighbor. You're all these things at once. And if you look at changing your life, you're going to have to look at everything. Can you work on everything at once? No, but you look at, you look at your body. You look at your mind, you look at your spirituality, you look at your relationships, you look at your finances, you look at your health, you look at your neighborhood where you're living, you look at your routines, you look at your home decor, you look at your wardrobe, you look at it all and you get strategic and you say, what one thing can I start working on today, today, not next week, not next year? not next month, today, what one thing can I work on that's going to help me move the needle toward the life that I want? And here's the thing. How do you move the needle towards the life that you want if you don't know what the life that you want is? So you have to define what your vision is. And for many of us, you walk through your 20s and your 30s and you were just kind of letting life happen you know, and you roll with the punches and you did your best. You did your absolute best with what you had and with what you knew, but something happens in a woman's life at 40. I am telling you something happens in a woman's life and she starts to refine not only her vision of who she is, but her vision of what she wants. And that is okay transformation can be a terrifying thing because you have been someone for so long and you feel yourself shifting and you're not sure that you are even yourself anymore. And I want to encourage you that just because you're evolving does not mean that you're not authentic. Your evolution, your transformation is a part of your authenticity. It is absolutely a part of your authenticity. So don't be threatened when you feel like you're shifting. Don't be threatened when you feel like I can't show up like I used to anymore. And then you feel like you're betraying people who expect you to show up like you used to. You might have been at a company for 20 years and you're expected to show up a different way. And you may be learning new things And you may be wanting to bring new things to the table, but people are saying, oh no, you've done this. You've done this all this time. This is your job description. Like stick with your job description. Like don't do anything fancy. Don't do anything new. Relax. And there's something inside of you. Like every time you have a meeting, you're like, oh my gosh, like we don't have to be doing it this way. We could do it a different way. And then you're not speaking up and you're not stepping up and you're not putting that proposal forward. Doesn't have to be a formal proposal. It can be, hey, Frank, in accounting, I think we should dot, dot, dot. And you offer a solution because I'll tell you this, women were created to be attractive solutions to the world. So no matter what sphere of influence you're in, if you're in family, if you're in ministry, if you're in the workplace, you are supposed to be an attractive solution. The way you build confidence in being an attractive solution is finding attractive solutions and creating attractive solutions in your own life for yourself. And they could be huge or they could be small. But what happens when you do it in private, when you have to show up in public, when you have to be the person with the answers and all eyes are on you and ears are listening to you, you're able now to speak with confidence because you're coming from a place where you understand I've done this. I know what it means to implement change. And it doesn't have to be change in the exact area that is outside of you, the change that you implement within you, trust and believe it is going to spill over into every single area of your life. But you have to be willing to change your perception and change your way of thinking around your life. 
this shift in perspective, it doesn't have to require something new. It doesn't have to require a a resource, a tangible resource. I remember when I started my journey, one of the things that really helped me was listening to podcasts. And I think it, it was probably a good two solid years of listening to podcasts. And I would just listen. I would just listen and I would feel a stirring, but I didn't do anything. And I reached a point where it was the anticipation, the expectation for who I was to emerge became so unbearable. I knew that I had to do something different. And some of you may be in that place right now where you know it could be in a very specific area of your life, or it could be just a general feeling like something is off. I know that there's more out there, but I don't know what it is. I know that I need to change, but I don't know what it is. Start with those 12 areas that I've mentioned earlier. I'm going to leave a link in the description box below. It is a visionary life sheet. It's complimentary. You just go in, download it, print it out follow the instructions. It really shouldn't take you long. It should take you a few minutes because your soul knows, you know, it's not, it's not a test. It's an evaluation to help you see where you need to focus in your life. Sometimes the overwhelming sense of frustration, it is so hard that, that we lose focus. Like we just feel disrupted and just unhappy with everything not realizing that there may be one or two areas that if we tweak just a little bit, it's going to get us on the road to where we need to be. So that resource is going to be in the description box for you. And I'm looking at my notes. So forgive me if I haven't been making eye contact during this video, but I want to make sure that I'm not missing anything that could be helpful to you. You might be feeling like you want to throw everything away. You you don't like your furniture anymore. You don't like your clothes anymore. You don't like the food that you eat anymore. It's just, it's just not working. Like nothing is working. Everything seems off. That is a sign. That is a telltale sign that it is time to make a change. But you have to determine what is that change. And then you also have to determine where is this feeling coming from? Is it coming from a place of lack? Is it coming from a place where I know that there's more out there for me and I'm curious and I'm drawn towards the light of my own dream, the light of the dream within my heart that is pulling me, that is inspiring me? Or is it that you are running from bad decisions that maybe you've made and now you feel stuck? in a certain place and you don't know how to get out of it, but you know that you have to get out. Neither of those scenarios is wrong. Neither of those scenarios is wrong. So if you're in a place where you're feeling frustrated, you are beating yourself up, stop for a second, because owning the fact that the decisions that you made got you into the place that you are currently means that you can own the fact that you can make better decisions for your future. So that is actually an empowering place to be. But again, it's going to take a shift in your perspective to see that, right? And to see what is available for you. And as I said, you can start with podcasts, you can start with YouTube, you can start with reading a book. One of the things I encourage women to do is journal. A lot of women do not journal. They don't take time to process their own thoughts and their own emotions. And so what happens is you feel what you feel, you react how you react, and then you keep it moving. When what you can do is for yourself, within yourself, ask yourself questions. When you feel a certain way, ask yourself questions. When you feel offended, when you feel angry, when you feel sad, when you feel happy, what am I happy about? What is, you just wake up one day and you're like, oh man, I feel good. Why is that? Search your heart, search your mind, search your spirit. What is it? And sometimes spiritually, because we are spiritual beings, there are things that are happening spiritually and we can pick up on those things. We call it women's intuition. I believe that women 
all people are spiritual, but I believe that women are deeply spiritual and that we feel things in a way that men do not. And we pick up on things in a way that men do not. So there is an intuition that you have, a God-given intuition that you have, that the Holy Spirit will be speaking to you and speaking through you in the way that you feel in your body. And that's a beautiful place to tap in. I often say a woman needs three daily appointments, one with God, one with herself, and then her appointments with others. So when you have that appointment with God, you can check in. And God could even reveal to you things that he's doing in your life. And that's, that's the reason why you're feeling that way. And you find throughout the day, you'll even get clues as to what that is. It's a beautiful thing, but ask yourself if you've defined whatever that better life is for you, if you've defined what that change is going to look like for you, ask yourself, Am I going to be happier? Am I really going to be happier when I have more money? Am I really going to be happier if I have a different job? Am I really going to be happier if I'm in a better relationship? Am I really going to be happier? And one of the ways that you can test that is to not make the change right away. And I'm not talking about if you are in a life-threatening situation, if you are uh, um, being abused and you need to leave, like you need to leave because you are in physical danger. That's different. But most of us are not in situations like that. Give it a week. Give it a week at your job. Try your best to adjust your mentality, to adjust your perception about your job, to adjust your perception and to operate in gratitude. Gratitude is an amazing perspective shifter. Because often the reason why we can feel dissatisfied in some of the spaces and places and relationships that we are at in life is because we are not grateful. We're not grateful for those people and those situations that are actually blessings. Because of the issues that we're facing, it sucks the gratitude out of us. And so we're left with this sense of it could be offense, it could be bitterness, it could be unforgiveness, it could be anger, so many different things. But we can flip that by having gratitude. This doesn't mean that if someone has done you wrong, that you're telling them, oh, I'm so grateful for you, I'm so grateful for you. But you could be grateful for the experience, you could be grateful for the lesson, You could be grateful for knowing what it is that you don't want. So shift your perspective and ask yourself, what can I do today? What can I do in this moment? Even if this situation does not change, what can I do to change me? Because very often the change that you are looking for in your life is a change that you actually need to make in yourself. So those 10 years while I was going through what I was going through, while I was bleeding and not knowing what I was going on with my, what not knowing what was going on with my body and doctors couldn't tell me what was happening, changes were happening within me because I'm going to be honest, I gave up. There was a period of time where I gave up on being healed. And because I gave up on being healed physically, I concentrated on being healed emotionally. I concentrated on being healed mentally. I concentrated on being healed spiritually. And that is what made the difference. That is what made the difference. And that is what in turn gave me the faith to believe that my body could be healed. So when you talk about changing your life, You can take your focus off your situation and put the focus on yourself. And I know that may sound selfish, but many, many, many times there are situations that we are in that are teaching us, but we're not listening because we're too busy complaining and we're too hurt. So we're crying, but we're not listening. So understanding what your life can teach you is so important. So 
saying all this, this doesn't mean that now you're going to work on your health. You're going to work on your finances. You're going to work on your relationships and give up on the dream. Don't give up on the dream. Like I did don't give up hope like I did, but focus your attention, your attitude on gratitude and what it means to enjoy the journey as challenging as it may be. Enjoy the journey as terrified as you may be to transform as terrified as you may be of losing the people that you love. If you start to show up differently, as terrified as you may be of what those people in that meeting will say, when you raise your voice, enjoy the journey, enjoy your transformation, enjoy who you are becoming, even if you're not sure who she is or what she looks like yet. Enjoy the journey and don't be married to a particular outcome. We are going to set goals. We are going to figure out what we want life to look like. Yes, you absolutely need to have a standard. You absolutely need to have a benchmark, but leave white space. Leave white space in the vision board of your life so that you give God a chance to surprise you. You give the people in your life a chance to surprise you. You give yourself a chance to surprise yourself because what can happen is if in your twenties and in your thirties, you just went along with the flow and you just did whatever. And now you have an idea of what you want your life to look like. Now what you do is you're like, okay, this, this man who, um, who I want to have in my life. He needs to look like this. He needs to make this amount of money. This has to be his favorite color. And it's like this, 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 this. And if he doesn't check all the boxes, you reject him. Not understanding that he's a work in progress, just like you are. The job that you want to have is a work in progress, just like you are. The goal itself is a work in progress, just like you are. And could it be that God is working on the goal? God is working on the thing while he's working on you and while you're working toward the thing. So this is all happening together all at the same time. God is good like that. It's all happening together all at the same time. So it's not like it's following this finite timeline and everything has to be a certain way. Absolutely have your standards, absolutely hold your standards and hold yourself accountable to what is required for you to experience the change that you want to experience. Because when that change happens, if you prepare for it, if you work for it, if you are aligned with what God has for you and he gives it to you, you want to be ready. You want to be ready to hold it in your hands and not fear that it's going to be taken away from you because of what you've experienced in the past, because of the disappointment you've had in the past, because of what didn't work out before. You have to be ready to hold it and to keep it. So it's not just strategy to achieve a goal. It's not just strategy to get to a certain point, but it's strategy to stay there. And it's strategy to flourish there. And then it's strategy to elevate from there. Because is it that you want to live in a certain neighborhood, um, have a certain kind of marriage, have a certain kind of family life, live a certain lifestyle, and then just stay there and stay stagnant? Eventually, what's going to happen is you're going to end up having the same feelings that you're having right now and saying, I want to change. And you know what? It's going to be even worse because you're looking at your life saying, wow, I am so blessed. Wow. I have everything I want. Why am I not happy? Because we have to evolve. And this doesn't mean that we're greedy and it doesn't mean that we are not satisfied. And it doesn't mean that we're not content with where we are. And it doesn't mean that God, I am not grateful for what you've given me. But the Bible says eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard what God has for us who love him. So that means that he, if he's a God of abundance and a God of creativity, what that means is God is constantly creating new things for you, constantly creating new experiences for you. And as a spiritual being, as a woman with a spirit, 
There is a spirit inside of you that is connected to God's best. There is a spirit inside of you that expects God's best. So when your life doesn't look like that, you're going to feel disappointed. You're going to feel like there's something off because there's a part of you that knows what you're supposed to be experiencing in life. So lean into that, not leaning into it to the point of despair and disappointment and feeling like nothing ever works for me. Why doesn't think, why don't things ever work out? Why don't my relationships work out? Why don't I have the things that I want to have? Why are my friendships so, so shady? <laughs> you know, cause a lot of women are dealing with that too. Shift your perspective and elevate your expectation. Raise your expectation for what is possible. And even if you are at the point where you don't even know what you want, you just know that it's not this, start to raise your expectations and start saying that. I don't know what I want yet, but I know that this is not it. And I'm opening myself up to expect better. I'm opening myself up to experience more. And I'm opening myself up to become the woman I need to become to receive what's better. I hope this helps. Blessings on your journey. I will talk to you soon. Bye.